Hello, uh, today we will talk about generalized uncertainty principle. We all know that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that the uncertainty in the position, for example, and the uncertainty in the momentum, if you take the product of these two, that is always greater than or equal to h cross by 2. This is known as Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which simply tells us that for the microscopic objects, for the quantum mechanical treatment of the uh, objects, you cannot measure the position and the linear momentum with infinite accuracy at the same time. That is, it is difficult to measure both position and the momentum of a moving particle with infinite accuracy simultaneously. So the word simultaneously or at the same instant of time is a very important one. So uh, today, so it is not the thing that this relation is true only for x and px. There are certain other quantities like energy and time or uh, angular position and angular momentum where this relation also holds. Or it can be further extended to a generalized uncertainty principle where you have any two general operators a hat and b hat for example and uh, you calculate the uncertainties in the measurement of a and b and then uh, you take the product of these two uncertainties, uh, uncertainties and you see that whether it is greater than or equal to certain quantity certain number that we would like to explore today okay so let's try to do that so let me start with by taking two operators a and a hat and b hat these are two hermitian operators in quantum mechanics uh, we denote a physical uh, physically measurable quantity any physically measurable variable by by a Hermitian operator the reason being is, is the Hermitian operators always have a real eigenvalues and these real eigenvalues correspond to the value measured in the experiment in the laboratory okay so we have uh, taken a hat and b hat to be two Hermitian operators and let's take that at the configuration of a system or the state of a, any quantum mechanical system is described by a abstract cat vector psi which is we have taken to be normalized cat vector let's say this guy this psi is normalized state vector when we say so it means the inner product of this is called cat psi this part this is called bra psi the inner product of bra with cat in case of uh, orthonormalized condition is unity. So we will take this uh, sketch psi or this psi state to be normalized to start with. Okay, so let's define another quantity which is called delta a hat which is equal to a hat minus expectation value of a hat. What does this, uh, this expectation value mean? In quantum mechanics, uh, this is a basically a quantum analog of the average value in classical mechanics we all know how the average values are calculated suppose we have n number like n1 n2 n3 up to n capital n the average of this is defined as n average for example n1 plus n2 all the way up to n n divided by the number of these numbers that is n this is how you calculate the average in similar fashion in quantum mechanics we define the expectation value which is defined as follows the expectation value of the a operator with respect to the state vector cat psi or the state vector psi is defined as this quantity where this denominator psi being orthonormal state is equal to unity so this expression actually reduces to this thing similarly we have a expectation value of v hat is equal to in this case all right so now for example this operator delta a hat which is the difference of the operator minus the expectation value of the same operator it tells us that it is nothing but the deviation of this a operator from this expectation value for example in a statistical uh, Method methods we have already learned how to find out this deviation for example we have a n number of data 
let's say x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, we can find out its average, which is, which is called x bar by the same relation, x bar equal to x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn by n. And we can subtract this x bar from each value given in this uh, data. For example, I can find out x1 minus x bar, I can find out x2 minus x bar and so on and so forth, xn minus x bar. So this, these expressions actually tells us the deviation of these value from the average value. Similarly, in this case, this expression written here, delta a hat actually uh, represent the deviation of the value of operator a hat from its expectation value. Similarly, we can write down for delta b hat. All right. Now comes to the uncertainty. How the uncertainty is defined? First, the first place. So similarly, we can actually go on in the our classical context. We can actually uh, define standard deviation. You know how to define standard deviation. Once we have calculated the difference of the average value from the original value from the measured value, we can take make us we can take a square of these values and then take the average of these squares, average of these differences from the average value. So these are basically the difference, square of the difference of the value from the average value. Okay, and then you take the average of them. So that will become the standard deviation sigma, which is equal to, suppose I call it this difference to a f d by general term, some f d i. Okay, so you calculate f d i i square i running from 1 to n divided by n then do root of this it is known as uh, standard deviation in, in classical uh, physics or in statistical uh, methods we have already learned it similarly in the quantum case when we define the uncertainty uncertainty are nothing but the standard deviation uh, equivalent to standard deviation in quantum mechanics which can be defined as so let me rub this portion so uncertainties are defined as delta a hat for example oh sorry not delta a hat delta a we are representing the uncertainty by delta a and delta a hat was the deviation of the value of a hat from the expectation value so delta a is defined as in the same fashion under root average of the dis average average will be replaced by the expectation value in quantum mechanics delta a hat represent the deviation the square of the deviation and then the average value of this and the under root of that is a standard deviation in quantum mechanics this standard deviation is known as uncertainty uncertainty in measurement okay fine so similarly we can define for delta b but let's see first check it out what's this equal to so delta a actually equal to under the root expectation value of delta a hat square delta a hat is a hat minus so this is a hat minus expectation value of a is the square of this and then the expectation value which is equal to i can open the square and which will become a hat square minus delta a hat expectation value square okay sorry plus and minus twice of expectation value of a hat into expectation value of a okay so a minus b whole square is a square plus b square minus 2 a b so a b and then we have to take the expectation value so this will become 2 a hat into a hat fine so ultimately this will become a hat square minus a hat square so this comes out to be the formula of uncertainty in case of uh, quantum mechanics for a, any given operator a hat a hermitian operator a hat fine similarly we can define we can write down for delta b the uncertainty in the measurement of b which is this all right now we have to actually find out what is the relation if I take the product of delta and delta b what was that equal to or is there any uh, condition on that fine so for that 
we will have to do some mathematics that so uh, let me erase this portion and then we start again we had defined delta a hat and delta b hat now delta a hat in itself is an operator again because it's a difference of an operator from uh, and its expectation value is an operator in itself that's why i put a hat over it so let's try to see what is the action of this delta a hat on for example psi and let so whenever an opera, uh, operator operates on a state it gives it may give a value and some new state in general so let me say that the, this new state is for example cat alpha so what's this cat alpha is equal to this is delta a hat cat psi delta a hat is a hat minus cat psi all right similarly for uh, for example delta b hat acting on cat psi is equal to let's say is cat beta which is equal to b hat minus expectation value of b acting on psi okay so ultimately we have to calculate uh, the uncertainties for which we are going to, uh, to do these kind of steps which are required to find out the relation uh, in the a delta i and delta b all right so let's move on and to derive this generalized uncertainty principle we will need to use a result which is called a very famous result called schwarz inequality so schwarz inequality which says that inner product of alpha with alpha for example if th these are three states alpha beta and psi so this can be written as So this is known as cauchy schwarz inequality or Schwarz inequality, very famous inequality, where alpha, beta uh, and uh, uh, your psi, for example, they were the states, the, they were the uh, uh, direct notation used to denote the state of a quantum mechanical system. Fine. Uh, this is, by the way, is equivalent to in 3D Cartesian coordinates, for example, that we know. Okay, so this uh, uh, Schwarz inequality actually uh, represents the same thing in uh, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates. For example, if I take the dot product of two vectors a dot b is equal to a b cos theta, where theta is the angle between a and b, vector a and b. The modulus of cos theta is always less than equal to 1. So this uh, relation here represents that the a dot b is always less than or equal to modulus of a modulus of b. So this is exactly the same because in quantum mechanics this alpha beta and the psi for example these states uh, these states which represent the physical state of a quantum a system these are the elements of a Hilbert space and the elements of a Hilbert space the property of the Hilbert space is that the norm of a vector in Hilbert space is related to the inner product of the vector with itself for example the if I take alpha to be the state the norm of the alpha is actually this thing to power half so it is uh, for example if I want to find out the the as analog of the same thing in three dimensional Cartesian coordinate the modulus here of a vector is related to the absolute um, related to the magnitude of the vector okay so if I square for example this relation both side so this will become modulus of a dot b square less than equal to a square b square a square b square are the squares of the magnitudes of a and b respectively so this relation is exactly the same if this is a generalized relation this is the special case of scotia schwarz inequality in um, three-dimensional cartesian coordinates where this a is a square is ex actually equivalent to alpha inner product of alpha with alpha and b square is actually inner product of beta with beta and a dot b modulus of a dot b square is actually the inner product of alpha with beta the modulus of this inner uh, the square square of the modulus of this inner product okay it's, uh, okay fine so let me erase this and uh, this 
So we'll use this uh, cauchy schwarz inequality in, in calculating this uncertainties. So we have to calculate this numbers, this inner product alpha with alpha and other things. So we know that the cat alpha is defined, we have defined this cat alpha like this. So we have to calculate for example, what's this equal to? So this equal to, now since A hat is an Hermitian operator, so if I, when I take the Hermitian conjugate of this thing, so this cat will become bra and the A dagger is same as A and similarly this is an expectation value so uh, this, this will remain same so what will I get is the following I get bra psi a dagger which is equal to a hat and the same a hat uh, with in product with a hat minus a hat cat psi okay this is into continuation now you see for clearly this a hat minus uh, expectation value of a hat is defined as a delta a hat so this is actually delta a hat into delta a hat get psi this is equal to psi delta a hat square get psi or in other words is the expectation value of delta a hat square similarly we can write down for beta beta which will turn out to be the same exactly same okay now we have to find out this guy alpha in a product of alpha with beta fine so let's uh, do that this alpha in a product of alpha with beta will be equal to so bra alpha will be delta a dagger cat psi oh sorry bra psi and delta a dagger which is equal to delta a hat times similar uh, this cat beta cat beta is delta b hat cat psi so delta b hat cat psi these values inner product of alpha with alpha inner product of beta with beta and alpha, inner product of alpha with beta in this cauchy schwarz inequality let me put as a equation uh, relation one so we put these values into relation one so let's see what we get we get the following this where alpha with cat alpha actually is equal to expectation value of delta a square expectation value of delta b square greater than equal to this is more or less of uh, expectation value of delta a hat delta b hat Square. Okay, so let me write down the equation too. Now we have to find out, uh, for example, what's this right hand side equal to? So, right hand side equal to is right hand side is delta a hat, delta b hat, expectation value, more or less a square. Okay, that's what we have to find out. What's that equal to? We have to find out what's this thing equal to delta a hat into delta b hat. This can be written as half of uh, commutator of delta a hat comma delta b hat plus half of anti commutator of delta a hat comma delta b hat okay what's a commutator and anti commutator commutator is delta a hat comma delta b hat commutator is equal to delta a hat delta b hat minus delta b hat delta a hat for example if i have two operator o1 operator and o2 operator uh, their commutator is equal to o1 operator o2 operator minus o2 operator o1 operator and the anti commutator of these two operator is o1 hat o2 hat plus o2 hat o1 hat so if we see uh, that this delta a hat delta b hat is comes out to be equal to this because the second term that we get from here will get cancelled out by the second term from this and the first term will be delta a hat delta b hat here delta a hat delta b hat here the twice of the same and divide by the two will get the same thing so you exploiting this relation we can actually uh, find out the value of delta a hat delta b hat so in what fashion we have to find out the expectation value of this all right so let, I, let me take the expectation value of this which is equal to expectation value of delta a hat delta b hat 
is equal to half of expectation value of this which is an uh, commutator of delta a hat delta b hat and uh, plus half of uh, expectation value of anti commutator delta a hat delta b hat okay so if we calculate this bracket for example delta a hat comma delta b hat that is equal to so let me calculate here delta a hat comma delta b hat if i want to find out the commutator of this delta a hat is a hat minus expectation value of a hat comma b hat minus the expectation value of b hat so by the using the commutator algebra i can actually write down this as a hat comma b hat minus a hat comma expectation value of b minus expectation uh, value of a comma b hat and plus expectation value of a hat and b hat so these are the expectation values uh, they will commute with this operator a hat and similarly these are the expectation values and similarly here so ultimately these three brackets are zero so this is actually equal to a hat b hat these all are zero because these are a number this will commute with the operator and these are two again two numbers fine remember a and b hat are admission operators and their expectation value ought to be real so this is a real number you will commute with a hat real number commute with b hat and two real numbers will commute uh, with each other so their commutator is zero those two quantity which commute with each other they have the operator uh, commutator equal to zero so this is actually equal to this so a commutator of delta a hat commutator of delta b hat is actually equal to this so using this relation here so this will become delta a hat delta b hat expectation value is equal to half of now the commutator of delta a delta b can be represent, uh, can be replaced by commutator of a and b the average value of commutator of a and b plus plus half the average value of anti commutator of delta a hat and delta b fine so now you see that this is an anti commutator of delta a and delta b where delta a and delta b both are hermitian since a and a hat and b hat are hermitian so this is an anti commutator which means delta anti commutator of delta a and delta b hat is actually equal to delta a hat delta b hat plus delta b hat delta a hat okay so if i take a hermitian conjugate of this for example so hermitian conjugate of this will be the same because delta a hat if i take the hermitian conjugate of this this will become delta b hat delta a hat with uh, because delta b hat will be delta b delta a hat will be delta a because they are hermitian and similarly will become delta a hat and delta b hat okay so it is essentially the same but if i take the hermitian conjugate of for example this commutator a hat b hat so this will have a minus sign Okay, so it means if I for a time into say is that if I take the Hermitian conjugate of this thing, so this is actually equal to the same. And if I take the Hermitian conjugate of uh, this thing, commutator of delta A hat, delta B hat, so this is actually equal to if I take the Hermitian conjugate of this. So this commutator is equal to delta A hat, delta B hat minus delta B hat, delta A hat. When I take the Hermitian conjugate, it will be minus of the same thing. So in, in other words, this commutator is an anti-Hermitian. Why this is a uh, this is a Hermitian operator. Commutator uh, anti-commutator is a Hermitian and commutator is an anti-Hermitian. So this operator which the operator in quantum mechanics which are Hermitian have real eigenvalues and which are anti-Hermitian they have a purely imaginary eigenvalue. So this operator here being Hermitian will have real eigenvalues and this being anti-Hermitian will have purely imaginary 
imaginary eigenvalues. Okay, so if I take the magnitude of this, so this, this relation here actually represents now, this is a quantity on the left hand side and this one is pure, this expectation value of this. So similarly, if I take for example, now since, since delta a hat delta b hat, the commutator is equal to a hat, commutator of a hat b hat. So this result holds for this thing also, a hat b hat dagger is equal to a hat b hat minus. Okay, so it means this operator, this commutator a hat b hat, which itself is an operator, being anti Hermitian will have a purely imaginary value. If I have a purely imaginary value here, the expectation value will also be imaginary. And if I take the magnitude of this, the entire equation, so this will become, this will give a real number, this will give a real number. But as such, this equation represents a complex number because here I have a imaginary uh, value that is the complex value and here I have a real value because this is being Hermitian I have a real eigenvalue so their expectation value will also be real so this is a real part and this will become an imaginary part so this quantity as a whole in the left hand side is a complex number it is like uh, the situation where you have z equal to some real part a and some imaginary part b so what is modulus z? Modulus z in that case a square plus b square where a, b are the uh, real parts of the cos uh, corresponding real and imaginary parts and they take the square of this. So similarly if I take the modulus of this equation, so this will give me modulus of delta a hat into delta b hat expectation value modulus is equal to the under root of this. Okay and uh, this. so if I take the modulus square this under root, under root will go away and I will have one more fourth the expectation value of a hat comma b hat modulus square plus one over four modulus of expectation value of commutator of anti-commutator of delta a hat delta b hat square Okay, so fine. Now you see the right hand side, th this term is a strictly positive because it's a real number. We have a square of this. So this is a strictly positive number. If I leave that out for, from this expression, so this expression will read as I have left the positive part from the right hand side. So this has become shorter. This is 1 over 4 okay fine so let me use this equation 2 we have this in the right hand side of equation 2 we have found out this and we already know that what's this equal to this is equal to the uncertainty in A Okay, and uh, this is equal to, uh, this corresponds to the uncertainty in A, this corresponds to the uncertainty in B. Okay, so this is, remember how we define the uncertainty. Uncertainty in A we defined as this. Okay, so this is the uncertainty square in terms of uncertainty of A. Similarly, this, the square of the uncertainty in B. So from 2, and for example, let me give you the number 3. So from 2 and 3, what we conclude from 2 and 3 we can conclude that the uncertainty in a square into uncertainty in b square is actually greater than equal to uh, so this is greater than equal to 1 over 4 okay so if i take the least value of this so this will always be greater than this the 1 over 4 the modulus of expectation value of commutator of a hat b hat is square. So what we have done here is basically the right hand side is always greater than or equal to this number. Suppose we choose the lowest number. So we have, if I put the lowest number on the right hand side, this side will always be greater than this. Okay, because this is always greater than this equal to number and this is always greater than or equal to this number. So in term, in other words, from 2 and 3 we can conclude that this left hand side is always greater than or equal to this right hand side. 
which is this. Now we take the under root of this equation or this inequality. So what we get is half of modulus of expectation value of commutator of A and B. So this relation here is known as generalized uncertainty principle which tells that the uncertainty in the measurement of A and the uncertainty in the measurement of B, the product of these is always greater than or equal to half of the modulus of expectation value of commutator of A and B. Now, how do we relate to the very famous, uh, more uh, famous, more familiar form of Heisenberg ascendancy principle that is delta x delta p x equal to greater than or equal to h cross by 2. We know that in uh, quantum mechanics, we have already derived this result that the commutator of, for example, x hat and p x hat is equal to i h cross. So if I use this relation into, for example, let me put an equation 4. So use this in equation 4. So what we get is, so now we have a delta x into delta p x greater than equal to half of modulus of expectation value of commutator of x hat and p x okay which is greater than or equal to half now the modulus of expectation of commutator of x and p is i ta h cross now this is equal to a modulus of i ta is 1 and the h cross is a number h cross by 2 this is a more familiar form of uncertainty principle. So this is called a generalized uncertainty principle, which gives you a relation between the uncertainties, uncertainties of two operators, A and B, where A and B, these two operators could be the function of this X and P or some other Hermitian operators, all right? They could be any Hermitian operator. The generalized uncertainty principle is this, which is greater than or equal to h cross by 2 in case of x and p. Similarly, if you want to find out, for example, delta x and the yth component of uh, uh, linear momentum, that will come out to be 0 because this commutator in this case is 0. That is greater than or equal to 0. It means what? We can actually define or we can actually measure the position as well as x position, x position uh, and the momentum, linear, the yth component of the linear momentum with infinite accuracy at the same instant of time. That is very important. This is the physical relevance or significance of the uncertainty principle. Now I want to highlight one more point that it is not about only the uh, measurement thing which is, uh, uh, when I say measurement for example, it does not mean the accuracy of the measurement or something. It means that, uh, that we we cannot at the first place devise an instrument to measure these two quantities with infinite accuracy at the same instant of time. This, this is so intrinsic in the nature that once we try to measure one quantity out of these two with infinite accuracy, the other one will have an infinite inaccuracy in the, in the measurement of that. So it is not about the instrument's capability or something or the technology, it is rather about the uh, uh, nature of the quantum uh, world or the quantum objects that certain quant uh, canonically conjugate quantities cannot be defined at the first place with infinite accuracy at the same time. We cannot even think of in our head of defining these two canonical conjugate quantities like delta x, delta px or delta theta, delta j, where delta is the angular momentum, delta theta is the angular position, and um, delta e and delta t, where delta e is uncertainty in energy and delta t uncertainty in time. We cannot even think of defining these two uh, canonically conjugate quantities with infinite accuracy at the same instant of time. So this statement holds for these three, true, fine. Okay, so what are what are canonical, canonically conjugate quantities? Canonically conjugate quantities for which commutator is non-zero. Okay, for those quantities, for, for those operators for which commutator is equal to zero, it means its, its physical significance is that they can be measured simultaneously with infinite accuracy, right? Because they have a common set of eigenvalues. But in the case of X and P, they cannot be measured simultaneously with infinite precision because these two don't commute each other simply. They don't have a common set of eigenvalues. Okay, this is a true statement regarding uh, these quantities. 
So what we have learned today is that what is uh, so called generalized uncertainty principle and that we can actually find out what the pr product of uncertainty is in the measurement of two operators by this inequality relation. Thank you.